Hello and welcome everybody to today's webinar, Low Tech, High Tech, Low Vision Solutions 101. My name is Elena Sturman. I'm the president and CEO of the Glaucoma Foundation. Since our founding in 1984, the Glaucoma Foundation has worked to encourage and support basic and applied research in glaucoma with the goal of preserving and restoring vision. Our board of directors and scientific and medical advisory boards are comprised of some of the world's leading glaucoma experts dedicated to identifying the most promising avenues for research. Our annual think tank brings together scientists from around the world and from different fields to work on the problem of glaucoma. The Glaucoma Foundation has provided millions of dollars in seed money for innovative projects, and we continue to create a space for scientists to think creatively and gather the data they need to pursue major grants from entities such as NIH and NIE. We are excited to have received a record number of grant applications this year. Above all, the Glaucoma Foundation is dedicated to improving the lives of people with glaucoma. We strive to be a reliable and valuable resource for the education and support of our patients and caregivers. You will find a wealth of information on our website about glaucoma, treatments, and research, plus links to support groups and organizations such as those represented by the experts and advocates on today's panel. They are Dr. Dalaram Shirazian, Joe Lovett, Olaya Landa Vallard, Mika Paikala, and Andy Bertstein. I will tell you a little more about each of the panel uh, panelists later on in the program. In December, we hosted a webinar on low vision rehabilitation with Dr. Dilaram Shirazian. She talked to us about the ways in which low vision therapists <coughs> functional visual ability and when and how a patient can benefit from low vision therapy. Dr. Shirazian is a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry and is currently as assistant professor at SUNY College of Optometry. She teaches patient-doctor communication portion of a first year curriculum at the college and works with patients and students in primary care and low vision rehabilitation clinic. We want to thank her for this eye-opening presentation. It elicited some great questions from our audience, many of them about optical devices which led us to create this webinar so that we can go into more detail about low-tech and high-tech assistive tools and techniques that can improve visual function. If you have a question during the webinar, you can submit it by using the chat button on your screen. We'll do our best to answer it during our question and answer session at the end of the presentation. If you, if you didn't get to your question, you can email it to me and I'll do my best to connect you with an expert. Let's begin with Dr. Shirazian and an introduction to some high-tech options for low vision, such as wearable and implantable devices. Take it away, Deli. Thank you so much, Elena. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Um, give me just a moment while I pull this up. So although I'm talking about the high-tech devices. I'm not on a high-tech device, hence my lack of uh, virtual background this evening. But anyways, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I will be talking about some high-tech low vision resources. This is by no means a, an extensive presentation that will give you all of the devices, but at least this will be a little bit of a sampler. So I will be discussing a few devices and um, I do not have any financial disclosures with any of the products that um, are in my presentation this evening. So just as an outline, we're first going to briefly review the prevalence of low vision and technology use. I'll then go into some smartphone applications, a couple wearable devices, and also an implantable device. So why is technology and low vision so important? Well, as we know, there is a high prevalence of low vision in the United States. Um, about 27 million adults have reported um, low vision and, or vision loss in 2017, and this number is expected to grow with our aging population. But also technology has had a very big boom recently. 95% um, of Americans have a cell phone and 77% actually own a smartphone. In 2016, 89% of households owned a computer, which has grown significantly in the past um, decade. So a lot of people have access to technology, but may not know that there are low vision options that they can use on their own devices. 
So let's talk a little bit about some of the high-tech devices that are out there. So as Elena mentioned, I do have a webinar that goes into detail about the low vision examination. So I'm not going to talk about that in, in detail today, but basically when we're deciding what device someone may need, it's going to be based on a few different things. First, the ocular condition someone has. We also consider what other medical conditions or comorbidities may be present. We think about the visual acuity or how well someone can see. We may do some additional testing like a side vision test or a, a visual field test to determine um, some other aspects of their vision. And lastly, it's really dependent on someone's goals. So if your goal is to read a book, for example, we're not gonna show you a bunch of telescopes to see the distance. We're gonna work on devices that are gonna help you with reading. So it's very much a goal-based examination. So let's get right into it with some cell phone applications. So the first one I'll be discussing is called Seeing AI, which stands for artificial intelligence. This is available on iOS devices, which are Apple devices only at this time, unfortunately, so not on Android. This is free and it does require audio. So what it does, it actually uses your phone's camera and it reads short text out loud. So it does text to speech functions. It can scan barcodes. So if you have two boxes of cereal and you're not sure which one is the Raisin Bran, you can actually scan the barcode and it will tell you out loud what cereal is in the box. It works for most common items, I should say. It does identify colors and money. It can recognize faces and emotions, and it can also describe the environment. So if you have an office and you take a photo, it will say, you know, it looks like a room with a desk and a chair in it. It doesn't claim to be 100% accurate because there's no human component in this. It's just artificial intelligence, but it's great for a free app. So there's a few photos and how this app works. The first photo shows a short text. And um, if you just hold the, the app open and your camera open, it will read this out loud to you. The second photo is a photo of a barcode and um, a bottle of sparkling water. And it says the, la the label information out loud to you as well. And the third is it recognizing someone's face. It says it's a 34 year old male wearing glasses looking happy, which is pretty accurate. Hmm. The next cell phone app is called Be My Eyes. This is available both on iOS and Android. It's free and it's available in over 150 countries and over 180 languages. And it's essentially a live video chat with a sighted volunteer. So it's essentially like FaceTiming someone that can help you with some tasks like reading print, um, reading instruction labels, et cetera. So there's a few pictures I have of how this would work. So for example, the first photo is two cans. One is coconut milk, one is a can of tomatoes. And the person can ask which one is the tomatoes and the, the sighted volunteer can say it's the one on the right. Um, another photo, the third one here has um, a carton of milk and someone can ask, has the milk expired and hold their camera up, to their phone camera up to um, the milk carton and the sighted volunteer can say, no, you have two more days. Um, anyone can, can volunteer to um, be someone on this application. So they do some very basic training and anytime you're available, you can kind of um, alert the app so that um, if someone needs your assistance and you're a sighted volunteer, you will be alerted, which is pretty cool. Next, we're gonna get into a couple wearable devices. The first one is called Iris Vision. So this is a head mounted, quote, virtual reality device. So it uses a Samsung smartphone and it's basically right in front of the eyes. And this whole system is mounted onto your eyes and strapped into your head. So it says virtual reality, but essentially it's, it's augmented reality because it's the, the environment that you're actually seeing, the real environment, but it can layer on magnification and other options. So it has some modes, including scene mode, TV mode. So if you wanted to magnify something in the distance, the smartphone would do that reading mode for seeing things up close, and even an RP or retinitis pigmentosa mode for patients who may have severe visual field constrictions. The latest version can also read text out loud. These wearable devices are pricey. This one starts at about $2,950. Um, this is a couple of photos of how the iris vision looks. So this is a, a photo of a male wearing the device so it is, it's almost like a, a brick <laughs> on the front part of the eyes that's strapped into the head. And it does block your peripheral or your side vision. So this can only be used while you are stationary. So you can't walk around wearing this device. 
The photo on the right shows a produce department at a grocery store and it's in bubble mode, meaning that there's a circular area that's magnified a little bit more than the rest of the area. And that can help um, you know, read the price labels, for example, in this photograph. The next wearable device is called OrCam. This uses advanced optical sensors and artificial intelligence. And essentially what it is, it's a four inch by one inch device that clips onto the temple or the side of your glasses. And one side of it that faces outwards is a camera. The other side closer to the back of your temple is um, an audio speaker. So it speaks directly into your ear and it's quite quiet, meaning that most people around you won't be able to hear it, but you can also connect it to Bluetooth headphones or speakers. So this does a lot of the things that the Seeing AI app does. It can read text out loud. It identifies objects in an environment. It can recognize faces. So for example, you can program you know, your friend Sally in it. And every time it sees the face of your friend Sally, it will actually alert you to that. So if you're not sure who's standing in front of you, um, it can help out. It can also identify money and products, again, similar like the Seeing AI app. This one is not free, unlike the app. The cost starts at about $1,990. So this is a photo of someone using the app. Um, it's connected onto their glasses and they're reading the New York Times. The camera will actually start reading wherever your finger is pointing. So this person is pointing towards the beginning of a column in a newspaper and it will start reading exactly where the finger is. So it's nice for, for that purpose. It also has other functions like fast forward, rewind. You can change the speed of how um, quickly it talks to you, those sorts of, of things. And lastly, the implantable device. So these are the ones that tend to be a little bit more exciting because they're kind of newer. This one in particular is called the Argus 2 implant. So it's an actually a retinal, an artificial retinal prosthesis. And it's a an retinal electrode simulator that's implanted into the back of the eye. And right now it's only approved for advanced retinitis pigmentosa patients with a previous history of useful form vision. The outcome is to sense shimmering lights, light or dark patterns or spots. So essentially this is going to help with things like mobility in patients who may be um, completely blind or what we call no light perception. Um, it's not, the outcome is not to read a newspaper again, but to be able to at least navigate the environment. The cost is very expensive, $150,000, but that does not include training and surgery. But since it is FDA approved for this condition, most insurances um, are covering it. So how does this actually work? So the patient is wearing glasses, which has a camera in it, and the camera picks up images from the environment and they are sent to the video processing unit. The video processing unit converts that image into an electrical uh, simulation and it sends it back up to the transmitter, which sends it to the retinal uh, prosthesis. So it essentially uh, works as your retinal cells uh, which are looking at the light and what it does, it goes through the visual system um, and gives you that pattern or shimmering um, pattern in your vision. They are actually working on something like this that will bypass the eye itself and will go directly to the visual cortex and the brain, which is really exciting for conditions like glaucoma or other optic neuropathies that may not be able to utilize you know, the optic nerve to transmit the information. So um, that is also, that's called the Orion and that is still in the trials. So as a quick review, patients with low vision, a lot of them have access to smartphones and technologies. So a lot of times working with your eye care provider or low vision provider, you may be able to find something that works for you in terms of a quote unquote device. That's really just an application um, on your phone that you already have. High-tech devices can be considered for various goals for certain conditions. They are also pricey, but so that's something to keep in mind. And we do anticipate future developments with the advent of new technology. I think we're just going to be hearing more and more about these uh, devices as the years go on. So thank you everyone for your attention. Um, my email address is listed here, but at the end of this, we'd be happy to take questions. My email address is dsharazian at sunniopt.edu. Thank you very much, Deli, for this wonderful presentation. And I'm sure we'll have some questions at the end. We are very fortunate to have Joe Lovett with us today. Joe is a award-winning documentary filmmaker and producer who began treatment for glaucoma in his early 40s. After years of slowly losing his sight, 
he began talking to people around the country of all different ages and backgrounds to understand how they are living with varying degrees of vision loss. Their conversations became the basis of his 2010 documentary, Going Blind, Coming Out of the Dark About Vision Loss, and led to this, his ongoing advocacy for glaucoma patients and public awareness of blindness, vision loss, and vision rehabilitation. Chu is going to talk about his experiences as glaucoma patient and how low vision therapy has helped him to better navigate his disease. Joe, all yours. <clears throat> thank you, Elena. And thank you to everybody participating and to the Glaucoma Foundation and to one of its founders, Robert Rich, who was my doctor for so long. Um, one of our aims at A Closer Look and Going Blind and Going Forward is to improve communications between patients and physicians so that patients will get the medical help they need when they need it, and that physicians will refer their patients with irretrievable sight loss early to all the non-medical help that is available to keep them functioning in their personal and professional lives. <clears throat> and, there's, and as we just heard from Delhi, just as a beginning, there's a lot out there with more and more being developed. Adjustment to any degree of sight loss is just that. It's an adjustment. And that adjustment requires time, patience, and support. It's not a quick fix. Um, there's no quick fix to adjusting to vision loss, but there are skills and attitudes to develop that can make our lives easier. Most of our fears about vision loss, and everyone is afraid of vision loss, comes from ignorance and myth. I mean, let's face it. Most sighted people do not know anyone who has successfully lost their vision. Meeting the people I met doing the film Going Blind was the greatest gift I could have given myself because I got to learn firsthand how I can adapt as more of my vision goes and that though it won't be easy, I understand that I can do it. Jessica Jones, who's pictured on our poster uh, over my right shoulder, um, told me very early in the game, you learn to use what you have, very important. Months later, Sam Janiskauskas, a uh, dexterity instructor at the Heinz Blind Rehab Center for the VA in Chicago told me, Joe, you can't be living your life wondering what if, what if, what if, and preparing for worrying and preparing for what's to come. You have to adjust to what is. And if that changes, um, you'll adjust to that later. It was a game changer for me because I used to be convulsed with fear every single time I lost another chunk of vision. After you know, worrying about, oh my God, what's gonna go next and how will I deal with it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. After Sam's straight talk with me, uh, when I would lose a chunk, um, I take a deep breath and say, well, that's not ideal. Um, but is it really affecting me in any serious way? And when it was, that became to the fact that it was, I learned to figure out what the workaround was and it literally changed my life. And it made me a much more effective and a much uh, less crazy person. And it's, um, it helps with other things in life beside uh, vision loss. Um, as some of you may have seen in our film, Going Blind, coming out of the dark about vision loss. When I first went for a low vision exam, the, ther the therapist stood across the room from me uh, asked me to close one eye and focus on her nose. She asked, what did I see? I saw her head and her shoulders, and then she disappeared until her hips appeared. I was shocked, I had no idea. That's your scotoma, she said. That's where your loss is. I was terrified. Terrified that I had lost so much vision without knowing it and terrified about where my vision was going. How could I have lost so much vision without knowing it? I've been treated for 15 years and never had any idea of the amount of loss. This is a, an extremely important uh, point, I think, for the physicians in the audience, that it's so important for them to keep their patients informed as to what their visual field is 
where their visual, where their losses are, and how that may affect them and their and their movement. It's incredibly important. It makes a huge difference in a patient's life. So my therapist explained to me that I scan naturally, and that was why I was doing as well as I was and hadn't noticed. And she taught me that, and she told me that she, if I had not really known how to scan, if that was not natural to me, she could have taught me to, to be as effective as I was already doing it. But then she instructed me, because of the loss of vision in your lower field, she said, your brain thinks your feet are somewhere they are not. And that is very dangerous for you. To emphasize what she was about to say, she took my head in her hands and forced my face toward the floor to look at my feet. When you are going through a doorway, stepping off a curve, curb, or walking down a stairwell, you must look down until you see your feet so that your brain will register where your feet are. After that, she said, you can safely proceed. If not, you're in trouble. Well, I was devastated. And the next day I was at my shrink and, um, and um, sobbed uncontrollably for a full hour. I was unable to catch my breath and I, unable to utter a word. However, when I walked out of her office and walked into, uh, walked into the elevator and then out of the elevator, and encountered her large, long, elegant marble long uh, hallway, I, um, I walked down as I normally did, of course. And as I walked through the front door, I burst out laughing. And the reason I burst out laughing was that for the first time in two years, I didn't stop, I didn't uh, uh, tr uh, trip on her, on her threshold. And the reason I didn't trip is because the low vision therapist had said, look down. And I realized that if I had learned that much in a 45 minute meeting, what else was there to, for me to learn? And I, I, I just think it's so important that people understand that it's the, it's the attitude, it's the um, wider view of things, it's, it's understanding where you are, what your vision is and how to deal with it, that's every bit as much uh, 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 of importance to you as learning the new equipment and the devices, which I'm very excited to hear about coming up. So thank you so much for this opportunity. And please, anybody can feel free to get in touch with me. Thank you so much, Joe. Uh, we did a screening of Joe's documentary to our constituents. And if you haven't seen the documentary, I strongly suggest uh, see it. It's incredibly uplifting and very inspirational. And thank you for everything you do, Joe. Thank you. Now I'd like to welcome Olaya Landa Villard as our next presenter. Olaya has a doctorate in special education with an emphasis in visual impairments and blindness. She has, an, she has been a bilingual educational diagnostician, bilingual teacher, teacher of the students with visual impairments and blindness, a university professor, and a fellow of the National Leadership Consortium in Sensory Disabilities through the Office of Special Education Program at the US Department of Education. She's a director of APH Connect Center of the American Printing House for the Blind. Thank you so much for joining our discussion today, Olaya, and take it away. Great, thank you so much for um, for having a, for having all of us and um, you know for inviting um, the Connect Center to be a part of this. So I'm gonna, share my screen. Let me get that up and going here. Okay, and let's go from the beginning. Here we go. Can you, um, are you able to see the screen, Elena? Yes. Okay, great. Um, let me put that down. Okay, so um, like Elena said, I am the director of the APH Connect Center. And um, the APH Connect Center is made up of quite a few things. Um, but I think one of the, the, the biggest things that we're made up of is um, Vision Aware is one of the websites that we have. And so I'm going to, oops, sorry, I'm going to, I'm trying not to go too fast there. 
there. Uh, this is what, when you go to our Vision Aware website, um, this is what it looks like for now. We're, we're in the middle of, um, of changing our backgrounds and colors and things right now. Um, this is what it looks like. And on our Vision Aware site, you will find um, resources such as the Getting Started 2020 Guide for People New to Vision Loss. It is free for download, um, or you can um, give us a call and just a oh, second. Yeah, your, your screen's actually not showing your oh. website. It's showing a document. Oh, no. Okay. Let me, let me. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no, no. Thank you for, for telling me. Let me try this again. It worked earlier. I don't know why it's not doing it now. Let's try it again. How about now? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Now good. Oh, now it is? Okay. Yes. Good. Okay. So you're able to see the Vision Aware resources? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks for um, for telling me. I appreciate that. Um, sometimes you don't. I don't see what you all see. So, <laughs> okay. So part of the resources, like I was saying, was the guide for people new to vision loss. It is free. It is um, thanks to uh, a grant by the Reader's Digest uh, Partners for Sight Foundation. Uh, we were able to get this printed up. And if you would like a uh, large print copy, you can always call the um, APH information referral line. And in just a second, I will show you how to do that. Um, and we also have a guide to vision loss for family and friends um, because hopefully you know you're not alone in this journey and maybe your family and friends might be looking for information as well to how the, how they can adjust and help you um, through this journey um, we also have a peer advisors program uh, and we meet one a month and the peer advisors the majority of them are blind originally impaired themselves and they help us with content to put up on the website content that's important to um, our consumers, to individuals who are new to vision loss um, or who have had vision loss and just want more information they want to keep current. And so we have that um, going on. And if you're interested in learning more about being a peer advisor, you also be you just be able to call us or email us. And in just a second, I will give you that information as well. Um, on our website, we have blogs that are um, developed by our peer advisors program. And and um, some of just some examples, we have one called Bro Roundup, Reading by the Dots. We have another one uh, about food storage um, after COVID-19, um, one about yoga and meditation, which uh, sometimes we we all need to take a moment and do that, especially during all these crazy times, right? Um, and then one of the real big things that we get a lot of requests for um, are, are, and recommendations for videos and personal stories about living with vision loss with an adult focus. Uh, because we also have other websites in, in the Connect Center that deal with families and children, but Vision Aware specifically addresses um, older individuals and adults um, that are dealing with blindness or learning to deal with, with new blindness that may be facing them. We also have something called the Directory of Services. Directory of Services has been around since uh, about 1922, I believe. It has a, over 2,000 um, agencies listed in the Directory of Services, and it's broken, it's broken down by state. And so what, one of the ways you can get information from the Directory of Services is to one, call our APH information and referral line. It is staffed from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you will get to speak to a live person. And if they are on the phone with helping an, another consumer, you can leave a message and they will return your phone call. So the phone number there is 1-800-232-232. 5463. We also have an email where you can uh, email us any questions you have or any comments or any requests at connectcenter at aph.org. And like I mentioned before, the Directory of Services has over 2,000 profiles of agencies serving people who are blind or visually impaired. And so when you call our phone number, um, one of the first things that our, um, that our information and referral line staffers do is they go first to the Directory of Services. So if they're going there first, that may be a good place for you to start as well. And then they kind of go from there. Um, and it, it, I can't tell you how proud I am of being a part of APH because of this, uh, this information referral line services. We have been able to help so many individuals with their first steps um, in, in, in dealing and in, in learning how to live this life with, with vision loss. And, and you can live a life with vision loss. Joe is a really good example of that. 
<laughs> you know, when talking about all his, all, you know, all of his experiences. Um, some high and low tech options from APH. Um, I, I have um, some, uh, some pictures of an APH smart brailler, which I really like for individuals who are starting to learn braille, but also their family members want to get in on that action. And so it's really neat because it's it's kind of, con it is connected to um, a visual, like a computer output. So while somebody is typing braille, if the person who, who is wanting to learn braille or um, is working with, with someone who knows braille and they don't, they can see what is being brailled on the page. So I really, really like that um, for someone who was get, kind of ramping up and getting, you know, uh, becoming more acclimated to learning braille. We also have the APH light touch brailler. Um, that one is it's a very mechanical device. It is uh, is pretty heavy, <laughs> so it's not something that you would be able to just carry around from you to room to room. I mean, you can, but it will definitely build some muscle tone if you're doing that. <laughs> um, we also have something called the APH mini slate and styluses. So that's uh, it's basically the uh, pencil and paper for someone who is blind or visually impaired. Um, and then we also have a Braille Tro reader, um, and that this is something that we have gotten really good feedback about for individuals who are um, learning to use Braille and need something that has a, a refreshable Braille uh, uh, braille area on it for them. We also have something called the Chameleon 20 and the Mantis Q40. So it's a, the Mantis Q40 um, is, is like a, it, a, a regular keyboard that you would use like you have on your computer, but then it also has the braille output. Um, so it looks a little different than uh, our other braille notes because it, it has more of that QWERTY feel to it. Okay, and then um, low low tech options. Um, we have some ultra lenses, and um, they look like a yellow, uh, almost like yellow goggles that would maybe fit over your glasses if you're wearing glasses. Um, we also have some uh, topaz filters, uh, an Explorer Bright Ray LEDs booklet, uh, and Brightline reading guides. And for these low tech options, there are actually webinars that can go along with them to help you learn a little bit about those low tech options. So we've got an, uh, a webinar called Benefits of Lighting, uh, another one called Handheld Video Magnifier with OCR, uh, another one called the Decision Making Guide for How to Determine Print size. So all of those are part of our APH low tech options as well. Um, and then the, the last thing is not part of APH, but I really wanted you all to know about this. There is um, something called the AT3 Center, and it is the National Assistive Technology Act Technical Assistance and Training Center. Try saying that three times really fast, right? Um, and so with this center, it, in general, it, it's, a, it's part of the state assistive technology act there's an actual law that talks about assistive technology availability in every state for um for the state's consumers regardless of age um and regardless of location within your state and um and so it's part of the atx requirement of a comprehensive statewide program they have um part of the AT3 Center that I think you'll get a lot of information from is going to these webinars that they have on uh, demos and loans of some of these uh, on some of the assistive technology equipment. Again, it's low and high tech here as well. Um, and so they have webinars for that and demonstrations. So I um, included links to those for you as well. So uh, it's good to know about this because if you're thinking of purchasing uh, a piece of assistive technology that's really expensive before you make that leap you can actually get it loaned to you from this center from your state to try it out and make sure that it's it, it's worth your while if you're going to be spending 200 300 2000 dollars so i wanted to make sure that you knew about that um again that's part of the connect center right we're connecting people to information so it doesn't necessarily always have to be just aph products okay um and i think oh that's it thank you very much sorry i went so fast but i know we, we want to have time for questions so thank you again i appreciate your time thank sorry you. for the technology issue no no problem thank you very much Eli, and uh, uh APH is a wonderful resource, and if anybody would like to visit the website, it's really easy to remember, APH.org. Our next presenter is Nika Paikala, who is the Director of Digital Accessibility of BVI Workforce Innovation Center. 
the center is dedicated to improving the lives of individuals who are blind or visually impaired. They provide experiential training and job placement opportunities, and they also focus on providing accessibility expertise to businesses around the United States to guide companies toward a more accessible and inclusive workforce for all. Welcome, Mika. Good afternoon, everyone. Elena, fellow panelists, and folks out in the audience, thanks very much for joining us today. I'm coming to you, as Elena mentioned, from Envision Incorporated, from our headquarters in Wichita, Kansas, and more specifically, the new Workforce Innovation Center. And I'm just going to pull up my slides and information here. So in, Envision is an 87-year-old company, and we started out doing manufacturing of products for the government. As you may know, uh, the Ability One program offers employment for people who are blind and visually impaired in, in terms of manufacturing products for the government. So our signature product here in Wichita is actually trash bags, and there, there's several other products as well. But a few years ago, our CEO, as well as Bill Hudson, kind of had the forethought and leadership to say, you know, hey, the jobs of the future, they'll always be manufacturing, but knowledge economy jobs are kind of where the world is going to some degree. So that's how the Workforce Innovation Center division was born. We kind of think of ourselves as a startup within Envision, again, which is an 87-year-old company. Envision has about 80 different programs as well, anything from Level Up for youth around the country, which has been virtual in the last couple of years, to an extensive art program. We also offer an adult support group, which was Wichita-based, but for the past year it's been virtual. So we'd welcome your participation in, in all of these programs. So I'm going to move on to talk about one of the services we offer is called the Accessible Products Hotline. And I'll give you the phone number in a couple seconds here. But uh, this was started in 2019 in the summer. We started it out at the summer conventions. And basically, let's say you're trying to buy a consumer electronics piece of equipment. It might be an oven or a washing machine or a memo recorder. And you want to know which products are most accessible you could call this hotline and speak to a fellow person who's blind or visually impaired and kind of get that information. It may be something that we already have, or at this point, we're still able to research new products that people might call us about. So that service, again, is free, and you can call 316-252-2500. And again, really, if you if you have questions about any Envision offerings, uh, they can help you and point you in the right direction, even though their main focus is, of course, the accessible products. We also have up on the screen here our Accessible Toolbox podcast, which has audio demonstrations of many products from a blindness and visual impairment perspective. One of our signature podcast involves using all of Uber's features with voiceover on the iPhone. So we update that about once a year. And our website also Workforce for All, that's the word for all.com, has information about these programs as well as our upcoming talent network where we're collecting resumes for people who are blind and visually impaired for positions around the country, both at Envision and at partner agencies. I want to talk about screen reader technology as well, because that's kind of a cornerstone of living with vision loss, and especially as your vision becomes less useful, um, being able to access information. So I'm actually reading this slideshow using the JAWS screen reader on a PC. There's also voiceover that many of you might be familiar with on the iPhone. And we don't really have time to do a full demonstration, but what I thought of and what I verified you can do at home yourself is the U.S. Postal Service now has a service called Informed Delivery, 
and essentially they send you every morning an email with images of the mail that you're going to get that day, the U.S. mail that your postal carrier will deliver to you. And using the JAWS Picture Smart feature, you can actually have JAWS or you can do it a different way with voiceover, but you can have it read you the text in those images so that you'll be able to tell what your mail is every day. So that's just one example of the power of screen readers. Moving on to our last kind of mini topic, and this I feel like this is like lightning dating or something like this with five minutes. Um, the home speakers and automation. So all of you know about the A-Lady and the Google Home, but once you buy one of these devices, which fortunately the barrier to entry is very low, you can start out buying these devices at about $30, and then you can just access a wealth of information just by voice. You don't really need computer skills or have to learn a screen reader, although those are good things to learn but just using these voice assistants that are in your home, uh, you can ask the Google one, for instance, what is my next meeting? Uh, you, can, you can add home accessories so that you'll be able to, for instance, control your thermostat using a smart speaker. So you can, you can start small with just a $30 device, but then build up your home automation over time. And, I know for a long time people have been kind of waiting for home automation to get to the next level. And I think these smart speakers have kind of finally brought us to that point where home automation is mainstream and usable by people with varying degrees of vision loss, including no vision, just using it by voice. So controlling anything from your lights to your thermostat and any number of other products in your home. So. We'll be happy to take questions. Feel free to have Elena put you in touch with me after the webinar. And then this summer, we'll be at both the American Council of the Blind and the National Federation of the Blind's summer conventions. So you can look for our booth and webinar there. And again, just look for Envision Workforce Innovation Center. And again, it's been a pleasure talking to everyone around the country and around the world here from Wichita, Kansas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mika, a wonderful presentation. Our final panelist is Andy Birdskin, who has run two separate healthcare marketing firms and is a specialist in healthcare marketing accessibility. He is now Chief Executive Officer of Accessible Pharmacy Services for the Blind. Welcome, Andy. Uh, thank you so much, Elena. I really appreciate you uh, including me today. And thank you to all the other speakers as well. I've, I've been taking notes. And I learned something interesting from all of you. So thank you all. Um, I'm going to share a PowerPoint with everyone. Uh, please let me know if everyone's able to see it once I pull it up. Yes. All right. So Accessible Pharmacy Services for the Blind. Uh, we're a home delivery pharmacy and healthcare company that focuses exclusively on the blind and low vision community. Um, the background of our company is my business partner is blind. Uh, and we launched this company together. And a lot of our, uh, how we approach uh, this business model is based upon his academic research. Uh, he earned a PhD in marketing. Uh, he, he lost his eyesight when he was 20. Uh, he earned his PhD in marketing with a specific focus on accessibility. And he wrote his doctoral dissertation on the accessibility of the top 100 retailers in America. And together, once we identified the challenges that exist when it comes to accessibility in the retail marketplace, we decided to build our own marketplace. And we launched Accessible Pharmacy Services for the Blind. Uh, we are based in suburban Philadelphia. I live in Center City, Philadelphia. Uh, we employ both blind and sighted uh, professionals. Um, and we're currently licensed in 31 states. So I'll tell you a little, little bit about our company and how we approach medication management and diabetes management. Uh, we have three separate silos of our business. We have accessible labeling, accessible concierge support, and accessible packaging. And I'll break each of those down for everyone. Uh, for patients, overall, what do we provide? We help our patients with prescription medication, over-the-counter medication, eye drops, insulin, mm -hmm. vitamins, nutritional supplements, guide dog and companion pet medication, uh, and home COVID testing. And that's for directly to patients. 
On the flip side, for healthcare professionals, uh, we train hospital systems, healthcare systems, um, and state OVR offices on how they can support their patients and clients with things like medication management or diabetes management. So what do I mean by accessible packaging and accessible labeling? Some of the things that we're able to do, and by the way, all of these things are free for patients. We make our money billing insurance companies for medication. Everything else that we do is a value add that really just helps make medication more accessible and less stressful for, 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 for entire households, not just the individuals who may be blind in the household. So we're able to provide pre-sorted disposable pill organizers. And by the way, all of our organizers, can we can mix uh, prescription medication, vitamins, supplements, and so on and so forth. Um, we have pre-sorted individual daily packets. Uh, we also have easy opening packet, uh, packaging for patients who may have dexterity challenges like Parkinson's or, or arthritis. It's kind of sadistic to send someone who has arthritis a one ounce bottle with a child proof lid. So we have some ways around all of these things. Uh, when it comes to labeling for all of our packaging, we can package in braille. We have, we have both grade one and contracted braille uh, label printers. We can package things in large, large fonts. Uh, we have talking labels. We work with some different technologies to uh, create uh, an audio component for a label. Uh, we have label reading apps um, and we're able to do this in both Spanish and in English. And our hope is that in 2022, we're gonna slowly start to layer additional la uh, languages uh, into this as well. Um, our accessible concierge support. The easiest way for patients to work with us is by picking up the phone and calling. You know, We need to have a conversation with the patient to understand how they're managing their medication, what their challenges are, and then we can make recommendations. Uh, Dr. Shirazian spoke about Be My Eyes. Um, we love Be My Eyes. Um, we are, we're the pharmacy partner for Be My Eyes. So with Be My Eyes, um, there are 300,000 blind users currently, and there are 4 million volunteers. And it is, it, it's a game changer, it's awesome. But there's also a section on the app where you can connect to professionals. It's called Specialized Health. And in there, there's a link to us. So an individual, whether you're a patient of ours or not, if you have any type of medication question, like you're struggling to read a label or to identify a pill or to figure out drug interactions, you know, please reach out to us and one of our professionals will help you. And uh, also, we also use email and texting, specifically with our deafblind patients. Um, it's a great way for us to communicate to them and help them with their medication. Uh, we also function as an advocate and facilitator of information on behalf of our patients. We'll, we'll advocate for the individual to the insurance companies, to the physicians and the healthcare professionals, and actually interact with caregivers as well and give them some support so that they can better support um, their loved ones or the people they're taking care of. Um, so once again, thank you so much. Our website's accessiblepharmacy.com. It's a very screen reader friendly website. And uh, I, once again, thank you everyone for your time. Um, it's 540-ish for me on the East Coast. So uh, for those of you who have a, still day, a full day ahead of you, good luck. Um, but thank you again. We really appreciate everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andy. Very, very useful presentation. And now we have some questions from our audience. But before I get to the questions, I just wanted to tell you that each of you got a shout out from the audience in our chat for presenting very useful and very good information. So it's appreciated by uh, the patients that joined today. So now on to the questions. The first question is for Dr. Shirazian. And it, it has several parts, so I'll probably break it down. And, uh, oh, you can break it down when you respond. Uh, how do you address patients' expectations if not realistic? Are some of the times they may not have accepted the conditions and would be expecting a magic glasses that may help them do everything in their day and live the life seeing everything clearly? Yeah, that's a great question that we come across very often. And oftentimes when patients come to us for low vision rehabilitation, they may not know what it really means. And they really think that I have some magic cure or magic glasses. So I think first and foremost, I have a conversation with my patients about what low vision rehabilitation is. And what it is, is maximizing the remaining vision that you have. So we can only work with what you have already. And so I also think it's important to let patients know that 
we can help them achieve their goals, but it may look a little bit different than what they were expecting. So if someone really wants to read the newspaper, we may not be able to do that with a pair of glasses. We may have to use a magnifier, or we may not be able to do that with a magnifier. We may have to turn to text-to-speech functions. So I think setting expectations is important and making sure that you have open communication about what low vision is and letting the patient know that you can likely achieve their goals, but it may look a little bit different than, than what they originally anticipated and having that conversation early on in the process. Thank you very much. Uh, next question is for Olaya. How can some organization connect with APH to get required services device, devices for our cl clients in India? So it's- Okay, some... good question. Yeah, good question. So what the, the first step that, that I, I, I recommend you take is to email that question to us at um, the APH Connect Center. So our um, our email, and I'm going to pull it up again because I don't I want to make sure that I tell, say it the right way <laughs> to you. I should know this by heart, but I'm always scared I'm going to confuse a letter or two. So it's our email address is Connect Center one word at APH.org. And I'll type that in the chat as well. That way you can just copy and paste it. So if you email us that question from there, then we can start to connect you to the individuals who deal with the, uh, with the devices and shipping it internationally because we do ship internationally. Um, and, and they would be the ones that would help you kind of see this all the way through to fruition. Perfect, thank you very mm -hmm. much. And I'm mm -hmm. glad to see that we have international audience with us today and yes. uh, people from all over the world, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, next question is for Andy. Uh, Andy, I'm interested in label reading apps. Can you give a little more information, please? Oh, sure. I'm responding, I, I have this, I'll, I'll kill two birds with the same stone. Not that I'm a bird killer, I love birds. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, um, someone asked a question about insurance I was just responding to. We accept all insurance. Simply just call us and we'll be able to identify real quickly if we're a good fit for your insurance. Um, you can go to our website, accessiblepharmacy.com. All the information's there. Um, as far as the, the, the label reading uh, application, there are a few things. First of all, I'm, I'm really excited to dig into Seeing Eye that two of the people mentioned to learn more about that. Uh, we have our own OCR app. Uh, what makes ours a little unique is that it's designed to, you know, as best it can, like read around the curves of bottles, and straighten those letters out. So if someone is reading a, a pill bottle, it's a little bit more friendly. It's on our website and it's on the iPhone store. It's called the Accessible Pharmacy app. We also work very closely with a company called Script Talk. Uh, Script Talk makes a, uh, it's old school, but it's, it's very simple and great technology. Um, it simply reads, it's a sticker that gets applied to any package that we have um, and through an app, or through a device that resembles a clock radio, um, you simply put the package or the bottle next to it and it reads all the prescribing information out loud. So I hope that answered everyone, that, that person's question. Thank you very much. And You're the welcome. next question is also, also to you, Andy. Uh, someone is interested to contacting uh, your services and it's a blind person and uh, he wants to know what's the best way to do it. Oh, simply call us. Um, it, we have to have a conversation. We have to understand what's going on mm -hmm. before, you know, a lot of traditional pharmacies, and this is no disrespect to them, you know, you can go to their website and sign up and you get your medication. Okay. And that, that's, that's awesome. And that appeals to 300 million people in the United States. But when we're trying to figure out challenges that you may be experiencing, we're trying to understand the level of vision that you have, the access you have to caregivers or family and friends. Um, and you know, if you're comfortable with technology, whether it's high tech, low tech, or no tech, if you're a braille reader. Um, so the punchline is call us. Uh, we have an in-house call center. Um, everyone there is very sensitive uh, about the situation and understands a lot of the nuances of blindness. So uh, simply go to our website, our phone number is prominently listed there and you can find us. If you, if you don't have access to a, a computer and you're using someone else's computer, um, I'll put our phone number in the chat. It's 215-799. 9900. You can also ask Siri, you know, Siri, connect me to Accessible Pharmacy. And Siri will say, Do you mean Accessible Pharmacy in Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania? That's us. So, <laughs> well, thank you very much, Andy. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, next question is to you, Joe. How can I access documentary going blind? Sure. 
Um, just go to our website, www.goingblindmovie.com. And, <coughs> excuse me, and you can um, uh, stream it from that website. It's a couple of dollars. And if you're part of a group that's be interested in having um, an online screening and then a panel afterwards, we'd be ha with different people, we'd be happy to arrange that for you. Thank you very much. Uh, next question is for Mika. What happens if a VI person's first language is not English, therefore cannot follow instructions? Can you help? Yeah, so many of the screen readers um, do support other languages such as JAWS and, and voiceover. Um, it might be a little more difficult with podcasts, um, but the screen reader technologies are very internationalized. Um, you know, JAWS has been for a while voiceover. NVDA is another one for Windows uh, that people can look at. Um, and I know the smart speakers are available in other countries, but it, it just kind of depends on what material you're kind of trying to get in another language. Um, I would say also to just kind of find out in your country or a neighboring country sort of the blind community resources um, that are there that, and they might be able to point you to more information in your specific language. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mika. Well, that's 5.56, that's all the time we have. The last very quick question. I know the answer, but I want Joe to answer it. Joe, somebody is asking whether your movie is on Netflix. It was actually, it, not anymore, but it was the first um, disability film on Netflix. And it was on Netflix for a couple of years, but it's not there anymore. Uh, the best way to get it is through our website, www.com. Thank you, thank you. Well, it brings us to the end of our program. Uh, we thank our audience for your wonderful questions. We hope that you've discovered some useful techniques and resources today. This webinar was recorded and will be available for review next week on our website on the events tab. If you want to get in touch with any of the experts, we list them on our website as well as our partners and I can connect you with each of them as well. I would like to thank our wonderful panelists for a great information and uh, our advocates. And uh, I hope you will all stay connected with the Glaucoma Foundation and I wish you all a wonderful evening. Bye-bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you.